Kata yet Vijay Junior. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction Data Warehousing Series. Our topic for today is about the overview of data warehousing. Next to it is the understanding a data warehouse. And the last one we have why a data warehouse is separated from operational databases. Now let's proceed. The term data warehouse was first coined by Bill Inman in 1990. According to Inman, a data warehouse is a subject-oriented, integrated, time-variant, and non-volatile collection of data. Now this data helps analysts to take informed decisions in an organization. So in one emphasize on the the subject oriented and the integration of uh, data Another one is the time variant, where you're going to uh, get the data and uh, what is the possible uh, solution to get the data without updates. Okay. And uh, it is an unvolatile, which uh, you cannot analyze a certain part of the result of the data until it is uh, it has been fully furnished next so we have here in figure one shows a picture of the creator of data warehousing and that is William H. Inmon okay a complete name is an American computer scientist recognized by many as the father of data warehouse Inmon wrote the first book held the first conference, wrote the first column in a magazine, and was the first to offer classes in data warehousing. Okay, Inman born on July 20, 1945, and right now, uh, his age is 75 years old, in San Diego, California, United States. His education came from New Mexico State University and Yale University. So mentioned uh, by Imon that a data warehousing is an operational database undergoes frequent changes on a daily basis on account of the transactions that take place. But uh, he mentioned also that uh, operational database is uh, not the same with the data warehousing. Okay, on the second paragraph we have, suppose a business executive wants to analyze previous feedback on a data such as a product, a supplier, or any consumer data, then the executive will have no data available to analyze because the previous data has been updated due to transactions. Okay, so this part supposedly uh, I gave an idea of a time time variant. Okay, so. If the data has not yet been updated, not yet fully furnished, then we cannot analyze and uh, have a result of the analysis. Next is that a data warehouse provides us generalized and consolidated data in multidimensional view. When we mention the consolidated data, it meant to say 
that all data must be gathered and put it into a one place and that is what you call consolidated okay and uh, it mentioned here that when you consolidate the data it should be in a multi-dimensional view when we said multi-dimensional view it is considered to be in a 3d way 3d way or maybe it's better to mention three sides okay the front the left or the right side and the top side okay now uh, that is a multi-dimensional view next paragraph along with generalized and consolidated view of data a data warehouses also provides us online analytical processing tools or we can call it OLA. Okay? So, Imon mentioned that uh, we can we can gather data, we can consolidate data, we can generalize the data through online. We can analyze the data through online if they are considered to be consolidated. Okay? That is the idea. Now, on the third paragraph we have here, these tools help us in interactive and effective analysis of data in a multi-dimensional space. This analysis results in a data generalization and data mining. So, you know, we have wordings here that uh, we need to interpret clearly. Okay? The first one is interactive. So, when we say interactive, when you gather data, uh, you can be fetched by the exact data from its exact time and you can also have or had uh, what do you call an output to this interactive uh, that you gather another is effective analysis so when this is effective analysis we're going to identify how effective it is or how effective your analysis on the data so when you said effective it is considered to be in the exact time without any errors the exact time without any errors okay this is uh, what you call effective so let's have an example or analogy about this effective or effectiveness now effectiveness and efficiency are very different okay? when we said effective uh, what you did has an implication that results in a good condition that is effective. So efficient, uh, what you've done is only to create the analysis on that time. So if you have an assignment to create it on that time, that is what you call efficient. But the question is, does your answer is correct okay on your assignment so the correctness of your assignment goes to the effectiveness that is the difference between the two now uh, there's a mention also here also the what you call data generalization when you said data generalization we need to classify all 
of the angles of the data and what they are mentioning. Okay? So, let's have an example of uh, data generalization. If you're going to ask me how, how a child has been developed in the mother's womb, so we can generalize it. Okay? So, from sperm cell to egg cell, they combine together, then they form another cell, mitosis. Uh, so it can produce many cells as much as possible. Then these cells produce many organs, and the last of it is the skin, which is the largest organ in the body. And that's what you call generalization, data generalization. In computer, you need to gather all data. For example, you're going to analyze payroll. So, what are included in the payroll? Okay? So, number one, the personnel, the rank, okay? the, uh, the value, the action, okay? what is the rate per hour, the rate per day, so we can generalize all of it, okay? And uh, the last one is what you call the data mining. When you said data mining, um, we are using normal forms, okay? So one first normal form, one one NF, uh, the second normal form, and the third normal.
the data source, where does the data came from? This staging area. Staging area is that we need to clarify that, that our data source is considered to be verified with source, with links. After that, it will go to our warehouse. Then on our warehouse, we can gather data. Data marks mean to say you're going to gather data into a pieces. Okay? So, when we gather data into pieces, we can call that data marks. Then on these pieces of data, the users or the analyst, the programmer, okay, the HR, okay, can have an analysis reporting and mining on the subject matter. That's it. Next, data mining functions such as association, clustering, classification, prediction can be integrated with all up operations to enhance the interactive mining of knowledge at multiple level of abstraction. So, if we're going to identify the word of abstraction, abstraction, okay, and it mentioned here the multiple level. You know, abstraction is something like a series of uh, idea in the algorithm of programming. So let's have uh, a simple example of abstraction. So we have array, we have list, okay? Uh, we have pointers, we have trees, we have hash tables. So this, uh, these tools, we need to use all of this because this has been used by computer scientists to have a result of the invention and discovery of computer. They use this abstraction, okay? Now, since we are on the data itself, so it was being inserted the abstraction, okay? Now, we can have abstraction through association. Okay? If you study mathematics, there's what you call association. And association means direction, okay? So association is a direction and what direction it is? It is having a direction of right and it has a direction of left. And there should be no both. Okay? Answerable only by left and right. And that is association. Now, clustering uh, is something like uh, groupings. Okay? You're going to cluster. You're going to group and subgroup or it could be classified in programming as a set and subset. Okay? So let's have an example of clustering. So if you have uh, what you call data warehouse, you're going to get a subset of it. Okay? For example, you get your payroll, you get your inventory, you get your sales, you get your expenses. So that is what you call clustering. Next is classification. Classifications identify what are the important ones up to the non-important one. And that is what you call classification. Okay? You're going to classify which of the which is much needed to analyze rather than going directly to the other part which is not important at all. And that is what you call classification. 
we have also prediction. Now, in in uh, statistics, prediction is very important. Why? Because uh, if you have your business, you need to predict every time. Okay, every time you need to predict of what must be going on in the future okay so i will give an example of prediction so maybe right now we're go uh rain comes so that is prediction so all of this must be integrated with the all of operations online the, the question is you can analyze data even though you are not inside of the company even though you are on the plane and traveling on the air you are on the boat okay you are on the uh, something like uh, other part of the country okay traveling you can analyze because of the OLAP operation online analytical processing now on the second uh, paragraph we have that's why data warehouse has now become an important platform for data analysis and online analytical processing okay so um, the the paragraph right here uh, insists that you need to learn data warehouse as a very important platform once you are on the company okay next slide so we have here in figure 3 the OLAP stands for online analytical processing how does all that works in a data warehouse now if we're going to look up here we have the data sources and that is operational system operational system then flat files maybe you are not aware of this three but uh, it is being discussed in uh, software package in your second year okay so when the said operational system uh, when the said system it is a computer system when the said flat files it is something like a folder a ledger a book okay that you need to transfer to a more uh, fruitful uh, data. Now, and that is what they call the staging area, right here. Okay. Uh, so something like as it goes directly to something like a what you call a database. Then it goes directly to the warehouse, the metadata summary and row. And right here we have the data marks, okay? A series of or a chop uh, data. It uh, subdivided into inventory sales and purchasing. And then we have the OLAP goes, the OLAP server, okay? So we can get right this one is on the company itself now the the all up or the online to gather the data and to analyze okay so we use this internet okay right here on the all up server and the internet uh, shows us uh, about the data in our company to analyze, to have a report, and to check for errors. Okay. That is 
how the OLAP works, online analytical processing. So again, online analytical processing is something like an online or an internet that produces your data on the company to show it to you through computers. That's it. So that is the first topic we have, the overview. Now let's go now to the understanding a data warehouse. Understanding a data warehouse, first is that a data warehouse is a database. Again, a data warehouse is a database which is kept separate from the organization's operational database. Second is, there is no frequent updating done in a data warehouse. It possesses consolidated historical data which helps the organization to analyze its business. So it's very simple that this slide mentioned that the data warehouse is a database and the second one is that the data warehouse produces timeline. Okay, timeline of the company. Next. So we have here uh, database, 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 database in figure 4, data warehouse overview. Okay. So it goes to ETL and we have enterprise data warehouse. It is called enterprise because the word enterprise is something like combination. So enterprise is a combination. So the combination of these four databases can be considered into one and that is what they call enterprise database or data warehouse. Because data warehouse is a database. Now uh, it goes to ETL and we have the data mart. Data mart. Data marts means we're going to segregate the data to a more useful form. Now, um, then there's another ETL, and after that, that considered to be in business, user, or unit. Okay, so ev everything that uh, goes directly to the output is that part of the business, part of the business, so that the company grows. Okay. Next, a data warehouse helps executive to organize, understand, and use their data to take strategic decisions. Data warehouse system help in the integration of diversity of application systems. So, um, this one uh, states that we need to update, okay, not only the data, but the system itself, okay, because of the word integration of diversity of application system. So when we integrate the application system, so for example, uh, your 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 manager uses laptop, then. He replaced it with tablet. Then he replaced it again with uh, Android cell phone. So all of the application must be provided by into these devices. And that's what you call diversity. Okay? Because laptop is different from cell phone. And cell phone is different from tablet. So, that is how it works. Okay, that's why we need to improve every time. Okay, as long as we can analyze the data into a effective and efficient way. So, I discussed already the difference between the two. But it is also mentioned in a data warehouse that it should be effective. Okay, they, they didn't emphasize on the efficiency. Now,
Now, next we have here is the data warehouse system helps in consolidated historical data analysis. Now, you will notice here the word data warehouse system. When we said data warehouse system, we are using a complete database system or it can be considered RDBMS, a Relational Database Management System. Because if it is not relational, we cannot consolidate it, all historical database or data into a database. And that's all for the second topic we have. And the last topic is why a data warehouse is separated from operational databases. So why? So let's answer it. So a data warehouse is kept separate from operational database due to the following reasons. First, an operational database is constructed for well-known tasks and workloads such as searching particular records, indexing, etc. In contract, data warehouse queries are often complex and they present a general form of data. So that's it. Okay? When we mention of uh, operational database, it is something like their purpose is recording, indexing. When we said indexing to make it more fast, that's why we index. Okay? So if you have your programming language or programming lecture, indexing goes in the word indices. And indices interprets starts with zero and the number n. So another is that the data warehouse uses only queries so that you can uh, view what would be the, the result or the summary of the presentation of data. So again, operational database is very different because operational database is used for searching records and indexing. So indexing making it more faster. So here is the figure number five that a data warehouse versus operational database. So to discuss this figure is something like operational database is used by all of those IT, okay? IT graduates or computer graduates. It can be considered computer engineer, computer science, BS IT, programmers, they are right here. But on a data warehouse, there is a what they call HRD, okay, uh, data analytics, uh, data forensics, so we, that's all for the data warehouse. So that is the difference. Now number two, operational database support concurrent processing of multiple transactions. So when we said concurrent, is that they can save or update the record okay on time basis for example every day every two days every week that is what they call concurrency control system okay so concurrency control and recovery mechanism are required for operational database to ensure robustness, consistency of the database. And it's true. Okay? So, we can use our database itself is very efficient in records 
of data. They are consistent. That is true. They are robust. Okay, that is true. Because uh, if we're going to use flat file, then I consider it is not. Okay, because flat file is something like very hard for searching and queuing. Number three. The difference of operational database to data warehousing. An operational database query allows to read and modify operation, while an OLA query access of needs only read only stored data. So uh, in OLA, you can check out the data, but you cannot update it. You cannot edit it, okay? You cannot input records on it, but you can analyze the data. It is being viewed for analysis. And that's what you call read-only. Read is something like you can read it on the screen only, but you cannot edit, you cannot modify, you cannot insert, you cannot add or you cannot update so those I mentioned goes directly to the operational database yes they can do it there okay they can add they can create they can query they can update but in uh, data warehousing online analytical processing it cannot be number four an operational database maintains current data. On the other hand, the data warehouse maintains historical data. So, yes, it's true. Because once you input record, that is a current data. And current data cannot be used on a data warehouse because on the data warehouse we analyze it with historical data so on our validation board we are finished with the overview understanding of data warehouse why a data warehouse is separated from operational databases data warehouse is only for queuing the view you cannot edit. Operational is something that you can add, and that is current records. Congratulations, you successfully finished our lecture too. Thank you very much. Good luck, and God bless.